planning to buy a new phone in the budget price range? You need to take a look at my detailed comparison between the two best ones available. Hey there smartphone fans, today I have two very good and very sought of phones, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5 and the Meizu E3. And I think all of you have been asking the question, which one is better and which one should I buy and why? Well, today I aim to answer those questions. So welcome to my Xiaomi Redmi Note 5 versus Meizu E3 detailed comparison. Which one should you buy and most importantly, why? And to start off the comparison, here is the Redmi Note 5, the fifth iteration of Xiaomi's Redmi Note series and it has become much better, much faster, has much better cameras as well, packing the new Snapdragon 636 and coming with Android Oreo straight out of the box at a phenomenally low price, around $230-$240. And that is the charm of the Redmi Note series, the highest Snapdragon you can buy and good cameras at a very low price, but it's never been a build quality or display standard at this price. And now enters Meizu's E3. The E3 replaces Meizu's uh, and E lineup, uh, the Meizu Mi Note, which was a very successful device. And uh, Meizu just decided, well, four or five iterations of it were enough, it's time to do a new device and they started the E-series last year with the E2 and this one is the E3. Now I have both full reviews of the Redmi Note 5 and the Meizu E3 available with other videos as well. So you should check them out uh, probably before watching this full comparison review. Um, the Meizu E3 is a more expensive phone and it does come with 6GB RAM only as the cheapest option. Uh, it looks uh, a lot different from the Redmi Note 5, as you can tell. First off, there's the unibody metal design. There's the separate uh, fingerprint scanner, which is on the side, not on the back. And there's a different camera setup. While Redmi Note 5 tries to imitate the iPhone, the Meizu E3 actually tries to blend in and have its own design. And it does come with a USB Type C, while the Redmi Note 5 still comes with a micro USB. Putting the phone side by side, you can definitely uh, tell which one is the more costly one. And this is the Meizu E3. Redmi Note 5 is always and has always been targeted at budget price range or like your workman's best phone for the money value. As far as specs goes, both devices are pretty much identical. They have Snapdragon 636, they have 6 inch. Uh, Full HD plus displays, 18 by 9. Um, the Redmi Note 5 I have comes with 4 gigabytes of RAM, not the 6 gigabyte RAM version. But the Meizu E3, as I said, comes with just 6 gigabytes of RAM, so I have that. For cameras, Meizu E3 uses uh, Sony cameras, while the Redmi Note 5 uses Samsung cameras on this device. The Redmi Note 5 comes with a 4000 mAh battery, while the Meizu E3 comes with a 3340 mAh battery. Redmi Note 5 does not support very fast charging. It does support fast charging, but not Qualcomm's quick charge standard. While the Meizu E3 supports M charge, which is a cold charging technology. And next up, we have benchmarks for both devices. As they have the same chip, pretty much the scores are identical. Uh, what is to be noted here is that there's a huge leap from last year's Snapdragon 625, which scores around 40% less. So you're getting a much higher grade chip with both phones. As you can see on the benchmarks, the Redmi Note 5 actually takes a slight advantage over uh, the Meizu E3. It's a like really, really small advantage, like less than 5% really, while the Meizu E3 only wins in the storage tests. But now, performance benchmarks aside, let's take a look at both devices and really compare how they look and how they feel because handling and looks, display, sound quality are one of the most important things when you're buying a phone. And again, putting those phones side by side, they're really well done. But the Meizu 
E3 really stands out uh, because of that much higher grade aluminium that's being used, the USB Type-C and generally the device is just better well made than the Redmi Note 5. The unibody metal design of the Meizu E3 and the coating on top of it are much more expensive than the Redmi Note 5 and I'm sure it takes uh, Meizu longer time to produce more units than Xiaomi with its snap together design. And since this one of the differences in price comes in with craftsmanship, of course, by the other differences, but if you're looking for better handling, better looking phone between the two of them, I have absolutely no doubt that this is the Meizu E3. Bar none, absolutely the best looking and best handling device I've ever had at around $300 price range. Really top and this have slightly smaller side and top and bottom bezel so slightly more screen to body ratio than the redmi note 5 as well and you can see that here now the device is not sorry the difference is not phenomenal but it does stand out and of course the redmi uh, note 5 is slightly heavier and bulkier than the Meizu e3 because of its 4000 power battery but now let's compare the display quality and i don't mean like resolution because this is not how we actually compare displays I'm talking about color accuracy, blacks, how deep are the blacks, and uh, sunlight visibility. Redmi Note 5 really tries very well, uh, but for me the panel is absolutely the same as Redmi 5 Plus, and not that it's bad, but uh, I think maybe you're seeing it here that the Meizu E3 uh, has a wider colored camera coverage and has better contrast ratio, which means deeper blacks, delivering a much more satisfying image to the to the professional eye perhaps to the untrained eye there probably won't be that much of a difference when you first see it and of course the Meizu e3 is also a tad brighter than xiaomi's redmi note 5 so better sunlight visibility and of course both phones are very different because they use different android iterations the Meizu e3 uses flyme os uh, and Xiaomi uses uh, their signature MIUI and both are really different uh, in terms of gesture navigations and you can check that out in the full review. One of the things that I really don't like about MIUI is its gesture system which is a bit... Uh, well it was kind of like all the other gesture systems were taken so we're giving you this one. It's not that it's like really bad but it's definitely not... Uh, the most convenient apps don't like it that much and you can only multitask uh, like with google's vanilla android with the apps you've only got open in the background while well, major's find me os is a much more low level software environment and they support a lot of other neat functions and the major e3 is the first and only so it's second and one of the only phones to the ones again by Maze the m6s which support that home screen uh, not physical but for stitch button and you can multitask with any app you have installed it supports multitasking you don't have to have the app open let's try a few tests here because i think all of you want to see uh i'm not really a big fan of the you know pressing one up at the same time seeing which one loads it faster on different chips and different uh, software environments but here both phones are using the same chip and practically the same storage so uh, both system softwares aside it should actually be evenly matched and well it is for me opening uh, up apps even opening games loading games is probably like 90% on par on both devices with one opening one up quicker slightly quicker and one game slightly quicker than the other uh, which in the long run you probably won't even notice so the same chip uh, although one has android 8.1 oreo and the other one has android 7.1 nougat uh, really do perform fastly the same in almost any case scenario one of the areas that uh, Meizu e3 and flyme os uh, really have always uh, lag behind those RAM management and this is still an issue here. Even with the 6GB of RAM, Meizu E3 uh, tends to load, uh, to reload more apps in the, which were open in the background, especially social media news feed apps. However, system apps and uh, 
some of them more used like browsers and such uh, don't reload uh, and are kept in memory. However, Xiaomi does tend to skip all the system apps like the gallery and you have to reload the images every time. As far as sound quality goes from the speaker, the Redmi Note 5 for me is clearly better than the Meizu E3. So kudos to Xiaomi for that. So in terms of battery life, the Redmi Note 5 does give a bit more battery, like 15% more in your daily usage, but that comes at the expense of the phone being heavier, bulkier and also longer charging times. So While the Meizu E3 tries something different, the Meizu E3 gives you a little bit less battery life but still definitely enough for a full day of really heavy usage and gives you faster charging, especially around 30 minutes gives you around 40% battery life, which is not possible with the Redmi Note 5. Actual real world battery life uh, difference between both of them is uh, like the Meizu E3 would last you a day and a half of heavy usage, while the Redmi Note uh, 5 will last you two days. And this is like real difference for some people. For some people, it really doesn't matter. What really matters to me here is Meizu's M Charge Cold Charging Technology and the USB Type C, which are the future. The Meizu E3 can be charged and you can play a game at the same time and the phone will not get like a degree or more hotter than it usually does. One Redmi Note 5, uh, it does not charge as quick and gets hotter while charging. Next up, naturally, we have heavy 3D gaming tests. That's right. I am testing the Redmi Note 5 against the Meizu E3 in two very heavy 3D game titles and I'm pretty sure you will guess which one is the first and it's Players Unknown Battleground for mobile. Now currently the Redmi Note 5 although it has the same hardware only supports the balanced and medium settings with PUBG Mobile so even if Meizu can do better I am testing both phones at these settings so it will be fair to both devices. Uh, to be fair, in general, PUBG Mobile is uh, perhaps the heaviest 3D graphics title game on Android right now because it's a huge open world and it is really taxing on uh, RAM with the smartphones, video RAM, and this really require a powerful graphics chip. This is probably very close to like GTA 4 style uh, level of details and graphics. Uh, and this is coming to your phone, which is really, really awesome. And here you can see both devices winning the game actually pretty, pretty well. On the top, you have the Redmi Note 5. And on the bottom, you have the Meizu E3. Now, do you remember those and to the score tests? And generally, the benchmarks showed Xiaomi to be like a few percent better. Well, in actual gaming, it's quite the opposite. The lower scoring Meizu E3 actually delivers more frame rates and more solid frame rates as well. So you can check out below the same settings. The Meizu E3 looks the more, more fluid title and the game runs smoother. Uh, you can definitely tell there's a few, if not uh, too many skip frames on the Redmi Note 5 on the top, uh, which both devices using the same chip really comes down to uh, software optimizations on both devices and it looks like Meizu with the Flyme OS really did well here. Still the game is I think fully playable on both devices but if you're aiming to be more competitive the Meizu E3 provides a smoother frame rate which is essential to competitive online players. Moving on to a different and another heavy 3D graphics title which is Shadow Fight 3 and again you have the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5 on the top and the Meizu E3 on the bottom. This is a very, very good, like really great looking 3D game. Uh, it's a fighting game on Android. It's one of my favorite Android games and I do play it from time to time. And the Snapdragon 636 on both devices is capable of maxing out the graphic settings. So that's why it looks so, so good and it really does look so good. 
What about fluidity? Here is also very important if you want to be compared to have the smoothest and highest frame rate possible. And again, if you look at the situation below, I think Meizu E3 delivers a smoother frame rate. The movements are much more natural and much close to around 40 plus FPS than on Redmi Note 5. Again, the Meizu E3 proves that software optimizations are really the key factor here. Maybe it's the Android Nougat, maybe it's the Android Oreo on the Redmi Note 5, but the answer is simple. Meizu E3 is slightly better at gaming. And perhaps the question I've been asked the most is which phone has better cameras, the Redmi Note 5 and the Meizu E3. Now, first of all, I want to point out that both phones deliver amazing camera experiences at this really low price. I'm talking about a year and a half ago flagship level of quality, which is outstanding. First of all, it's portrait mode. For me, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5, although it uses a software solution rather than Meizu E3's hardware second sensor, provides better looking bokeh shots. But again, the difference is really not, not huge, but I can definitely see it. Although in color reproduction uh, and like real life reproduction of the colors, uh, in sunlight environment, the Meizu E3 far outweighed the Redmi Note 5, which always had like a bit of a more darker tone to the colors than I would like. But in uh, indoor environments, both phones actually produce really good shots. And that's why I got to think that the Redmi Note 5 probably uses cheaper lenses here because of that color reproduction. And this is more evidently known in low light environment shots, as you can see here. Now, which one has better low light cameras? Both cameras, I said, again, are pretty good and I had to go like really, really deep to get the difference. What I found out was that the Meizu E3, when zooming close and especially at really low light environments provided a less noise, like really a lot less noise in the images with perhaps equal amount of detail between both. So the answer is that the Meizu E3's rear camera is better. As far as video goes, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5 does feature electronic image stabilization and has stable video than the Meizu E3 and a slightly better print camera in my books. So in the end, it turns out that both phones really offer a lot from their predecessors last year. They're both more powerful, have much better cameras and are much closer to a flagship device than the Redmi Note 4 was and the Meizu E2 was a year, a year and a half ago. The Meizu E3 is slightly more expensive, but that is because it doesn't come with a 4 or 3 GB version like the Redmi Note 5, and it's only sold with 6 GB RAM. So it's always aiming for a more higher grade phone than the Redmi Note 5, which is kind of like your workman's flagship. The Meizu E3 is better built, lighter, has a better display, and find me OS. I really honestly prefer it to Mi Y9, but with Mi Y10 coming, mm, it's really close between the two. In general, both phones are really good. Redmi Note 5 is essentially a cheaper option, and you can tell that immediately from holding it, but it's not technically, it's not an inferior phone to the Meizu E3. I'm talking uh, if you're comparing cameras, if you're comparing uh, gameplay with 3D graphics, even if you're comparing to overall performance of the phones and the battery life, both phones are really, really good. And there's nothing wrong with either one of them. They're both good. Both phones are absolutely worth the asking price. If you ask this reviewer, I've always fancied Meizu over Xiaomi at any price range because I prefer Flyme OS to MIUI and Meizu phones usually come with better build quality as this is the case here and better display which are two very important factors for me and that Meizu quick charge which is a cold charge and the phone doesn't get cold is really a big plus for me but if you want more endurance on a single charge if you want a cheaper price and a technically same phone as the Meizu E3 the Redmi Note 5 will absolutely satisfy your needs. This has been Stephen Fox. Thank you for watching my detailed comparison between Redmi Note 5 and Meizu E3. Don't forget to like the video if you like it and subscribe to my channel for more honest reviews like this. And I have a lot of other reviews 
hands-on videos, unboxing and comparisons which you also might want to check out so feel free to do so. If there's anything you want, leave a comment below. It's me Stephen Fox, thank you, peace out.